A lot of my viewers have been asking me what do I own and what do I drive as far as cars go, but I should go a little bit further back. Because as I told you in my intro video, the reason that I started Alex and Autos and the reason that I became an automotive journalist was because I didn't find reviews out there that really said what I wanted to hear about cars or told me the details that I found important about cars. And that particular car was a 2006 Volvo V70R, which I no longer own. As I said, I have very fond memories of that car, and the reason it is no longer with me is because uh, I'm living up here in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and in order to buy this property and build a house here, we really had to reduce our lifestyle a little bit for a number of years, and rather unfortunately, uh, the Volvo V70R was worth some money, even though it was a used car, and so we sold it. And uh, that Volvo ended up actually getting us our first Jaguar, because strangely enough, Jaguar XJs, which is what you see before you right here, uh, are fairly expensive to buy, but fairly inexpensive to own as uh, used vehicles. And so we sold the, the Volvo V70R and we bought a 2000 Jaguar XJ8 as our first uh, used Jaguar. And that one lasted us for maybe about four years or so and about 60,000 miles. Uh, and then it ran out of oil very unexpectedly and uh, the engine blew up. So we got rid of that one and ended up buying the car that you see before you right here, which is a 2005 Jaguar Super V8. Now the XJ8 family has a few different varieties of it. There's the regular old XJ8, there's the long wheelbase XJ8, and this is a long wheelbase XJ8, uh, which was sold as the XJ8L. Then there was also the Vanden Pla, which was a fancier long wheelbase XJ8. And then there was the uh, Jaguar XJR, which was the short wheelbase Jaguar XJ with a supercharged V8 under the hood, 390 horsepower supercharged V8. And then there was this car, which is the Super V8, which is sort of a combination of the XJR and the Vanden Pla. So it's a long wheelbase car with all the bells and whistles and the supercharged V8 under the hood. Now, as I said, we got this particular one used. It had under 40,000 miles on it. And we bought it about uh, two or three years ago. It was a very good value because this era of XJ8 depreciated very rapidly. And uh, strangely enough, the more expensive you got in the XJ8 line, the more obvious that rapid depreciation was on the used car market. That doesn't seem to be happening right now to the modern Jaguar XJs because they're kind of appealing to a different owner. Uh, you know, this is that very classic Jaguar style with the little leaper on the front and, and uh, acres of, of uh, walnut trim on the inside uh, and the very classic Jaguar shapes going on all the way around. Now this is a 2014 BMW X5, which I do not own, but this is a car that we're reviewing this week, and so you'll see the video of this X5 uh, in about a week or so after this video debuts, so go ahead and stay tuned for that one because this is coming right up. Now this black SUV I do own, and this is a 2009 Saab 97 Aero. The Saab 97 was also known as the Troll Blazer by some people because the Oldsmobile Bravada, GMC Envoy, Chevy Trail Blazer, uh, Buick Rainier, Isuzu, something or other, and the Saab 97 are all basically the same vehicle. This was General Motors' peak of badge engineering, if you will. Um, but I actually think that the 97 Aero was the most attractive of the GMT 360 series of SUVs. This particular one has the 6 liter V8 under the hood, and I got this one because we need to tow. The reason we need to tow is because we built our own home up here in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and everything that is the house came in a trailer towed by a GMC Envoy that we had right prior to this. Now that GMC Envoy ended up on its fourth transmission. That particular one was purchased new, 2002 model. Um, and as I said, we replaced the transmission three times. So it had four transmissions in it. And it was just time for that vehicle to go because it was starting to have some more mechanical problems. And this particular beauty we found uh, in a dealer in Santa Rosa. It had 26,000 miles on it, which is very, very low. Uh, and it was barely still under warranty. Um, and it was actually a really good deal. So it's hard to go wrong with this one. The inspiration for this, strangely enough, was the modern Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT because they're kind of a similarly themed vehicle, uh, an SUV with a decent amount of towing capacity and a really big engine under the hood. Um, it makes towing heavy trailers an awful lot easier. One of the particular reasons that I like the GMT 360 series of SUVs for towing is that even though it only has a four-speed automatic, and I would prefer a few uh, more gears under the hood for towing, it also has an air suspension in the back and it has a relatively high allowable tongue weight. So it's a lot easier to load up the tongue on this when you're tra uh, trailering than in a number of other modern crossovers or modern SUVs. And lastly, because everyone that lives out in the country needs to have a redneck mobile, I have a 2000 Grand Cherokee Limited with the 4.7 liter V8. This particular SUV was my mom's before, but she got a brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee 
and uh, we were able to snag this one off of her for off-road duty. So uh, obviously these were not the tires and rims that she had on while she was driving it around Texas. Uh, so we put knobbly off-road rubber on it. Um, there's a series about this vehicle on my channel. You'll find it under Jeep Comanche. And the reason that it's Jeep Comanche is because our plan is to cut this SUV right around here and turn it into a pickup truck. Now hopefully that project will get in full swing sometime this summer. We haven't had too much time to do this over the winter, but it definitely is in our plans right now. We need to do a little bit of subframe strengthening on this vehicle, and then we're gonna go ahead and chop the top off. Well, I hope that helps you understand where I'm coming from in terms of cars. On my illustrious cars I have owned list, I can also include a 1988 Ford Aerostar, a 1988 Chrysler minivan. Those two obviously were not new. I had a 1997 Eagle Vision, which was new, a 2000 Chrysler LHS, that was new as well, a uh, 2000 Volvo S70 T5 with the manual transmission. That particular one wasn't new, but it was almost new. And then of course, as I said before, the 2006 Volvo V70R, which started this whole process, as well as that 2002 GMC Envoy. So I hope that answers all the burning questions that everyone had. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest car reviews. I'm also gonna be doing a uh, quick brake change on this vehicle and I'll probably pop that in another video and then post it on the channel. If you don't like that or are not interested in sort of routine maintenance videos on vehicles, then just let me know down there. Uh, I've been sort of toying with the idea just a little bit. I'm not sure how that really fits with the channel's demographics or the kind of videos that everybody that watches my channel is interested in, but I figured I would give it a whirl and uh, see where it goes. So I will see you next week.